Hello! In the past few videos, we have been studying about the story of the discovery of the structure of an atom. We studied initially the Dalton's atomic theory, then we went on to J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model, and then we studied about the Rutherford's model of an atom. And then I told you that in order to move ahead with the story, it's necessary that we know what was going on in the timeline in the scientific world at that time, which influenced the discovery or the uh, thought of another model of an atom, which was given by Bohr. So doing this, we studied about the uh, dual nature of electromagnetic radiations. We talked about the wave-like nature of electromagnetic radiations and the particle-like nature. In the wave-like nature, we talked about the, uh, the interference and diffraction shown by waves. And for particle-like wave, uh, like nature of electromagnetic radiations, I told you about the black body radiation and we studied about the photoelectric effect. Now, moving on with the story, it is time now to see that there was quantization, the concept of quantization which was given by Max Planck. This concept of quantization was now taken further to an atom. And it was that which later led Bohr to give his model of an atom. So today the topic of our video is the evidence for quantized electronic spectra. Let us move on with this now. If you have white light, and we know that white light uh, consists of these different colors which are in the visible range. The electromagnetic uh, spectrum tells us that in the visible range, the frequencies are from 7.5 into 10 to the power 14 hertz to 4 into 10 to the power 14 hertz. And these are the seven colors which are called with Gior, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red, which form or constitute the white light. Now, when white light is passed through a medium which is uh, whose density is different, whenever white light passes through a medium whose density is different, it shows diffraction. And the diffraction is not uh, something which is uh, like all of it, all of the light bends. It depends on the frequency and the wavelength of the, of the different parts of the light of that particular radiation. And what is it that we observe? that when the, the light or the radiation which has lower wavelength shows maximum deviation when it goes, when it moves from one medium to the other. So if we expect violet color has the highest frequency, so it has the least, uh, it has the least wavelength. So it is violet color which has the least wavelength and therefore it should deviate the most when it changes its medium because it has highest frequency. And red, on the other hand, in white light, it has the it has the least frequency, but it has the highest wavelength. Since it has the highest wavelength, it should show the least deviation. And since this shows least deviation, orange should show more, yellow more, green even more, blue, indigo, and violet the most. So what we see, if we allow white light to pass through a prism, a prism is a glass uh, object which allows light to pass through it, which does not absorb any radiation. Therefore, whatever light passes through it, the difference is only in the medium. Instead of moving in air, it is now moving in, a, in another transparent medium. So when light passes through the prism, it, due to the change in the medium, it bends. And when it bends, the different colors, they split up. And when they split up, the light which comes out of the prism is recorded on a photographic film or on a detector and we find instead of white color we find the light split up into all the colors which are forming different patches on the on the film and what do we observe that the red color just merges into orange i have only three markers so i could use only three colors to show this to you which i have all the colors so red merges into orange orange merges into yellow yellow merges into green green into blue into indigo and finally we have violet and it is like a rainbow that you see on a rainy day that all the colors are merging one into the other but they are also split up and you can see each color separately too 
such a spectrum is known as a continuous spectrum so light forms a continuous spectrum when it is passed through a prism now if i take uh, this was prism has is transparent but if we take an opaque object like this marker this end of the marker is blue in color why does it appear blue to us because when white light falls on a blue object it absorbs all other colors but it does not absorb that color the blue color so when it it reflects the blue color it is this reflected light which falls on our eyes and we see this object to be blue similarly the green colored end the green cap absorbs all other colors but does not absorb the green color and therefore it reflects green color and it appears green to us so we find that objects which are not transparent like the prism they may absorb certain colors of the white light and they may they may just uh, not absorb the remaining making use of this what did we do we put an absorbing sample in the path of the white light and when we did this what do we find that light every object has specific colors that it absorbs and specific colors that it does not absorb but later if you heat this object you know what happens when when an object absorbs we've studied in photoelectric effect when light falls on metal it ejects electrons so when it absorbs these radiations definitely it is increasing the energy of the electrons or the atom and therefore it vibrates even more and in order to become stable this atom or molecule should give out that particular radiation which it has absorbed and then it can be comfortable again it can be stable again therefore we find that when this energy that it has absorbed it was recorded and we allowed the entire spectrum to be formed and when we get this spectrum this is known as the atomic spectrum of that particular element now when we whatever energy it absorbed it absorbed when you heat up this object it will release only those wavelengths that it absorbed you can only give out what you have if that gas sample absorbed only blue color and when you heat it up it should emit only blue color and the remaining colors should not be seen and that was what was observed that if you have the absorption spectrum of a sample of any gas it was found that this is showing all the colors again i do not have the marker so i have just shown you three colors it could not show a particular color which i have shown in black but the rest of the spectrum it was displaying and it was showing all the lines in the spectrum so this is known as the line spectrum because it is showing all the lines but this particular gas that we had in the path of the white light it absorbed only blue color so the absorption spectrum showed not the blue color because that was absorbed but the remaining colors were visible in the spectrum but when we heated an it gave out this uh, the uh, radiation that it had absorbed the emission spectrum has the blue color that it absorbed but all other lines were black now this is a characteristic of every element just as you have thumbprints for human beings every element has its own absorption and emission spectrum and these are known as the atomic spectra and they form the identity of the element so we have line emission spectrum robert bunsen was a scientist who in 18 he lived in 1811 to 1899 and he gave the concept of these line spectra and gave the spectra of rubidium cesium thallium indium gallium and scandium and it was by this method of spectroscopy that it was identified by scientists that the sun consists of helium thank you for watching